In 1998, Small Soldiers came out. Directed by Joe Dante, it tells the story of some very dangerous action figures, in which after a series of action figures get programmed with high-tech military microchips, they become sentient, in which the brutal toy army known as the Commando Elites are hell-bent on destroying the more monstrous-looking Gorgonites, whom just simply want to seek refuge and escape the Elites. A young teenager called Alan gets caught in the crossfire of this out of this world toy battle to which he must help the Gorgonites from the evil elites who will stop at nothing to defeat their opponents. In this flawed but fun kids movie which like Gremlins has Joe Dante's usual tropes of out of this world zaniness and mania. So today we are going to look into this movie about toys coming to life and becoming sentient and taking part in an action packed adventure. The one that isn't Toy Story. As we look into 10 things that you didn't know about small soldiers. Let's check it out. So remember, you are the best of the best of the few and the proud. Let the first shot be fired! Search out the Gorgonites and frag them all! Yeah. Number 10, Shift in Tone. One, two, yeah. One. A lot of people comment on how Small Soldiers feels uneven, in that it often switches from being a fun adventure movie for kids to being a nightmare-inducing dark tale for older teenagers. Well, this is because Joe Dante was originally directing Small Soldiers as an edgy movie, but during the shoot, sponsors stepped in and said they wanted the movie to be more kid-friendly and cute. However, at that stage, many of Small Soldiers' darker, creepier moments had already been filmed and in the can, presumably including the creepy-as-hell mutant Barbie doll scene with Dante having to somehow make it feel more child-friendly for a younger audience. Which is why the movie feels one part Toy Story and one part Gremlins. And despite cutting out some of the movie's violence and explosions, the movie was still hit with a PG-13 rating. Which further caused more issues. Number 9, Burger King weren't happy. Burger King teamed up with Small Soldiers Production in order to promote their new burger, the Rodeo Burger, in which an advert was put together featuring Chip Hazard. And the Rodeo Burger Mill even came with Small Soldier toys to promote the film. However, Burger King assumed that Small Soldiers would be rated PG, and when they heard it was PG-13, the company weren't too happy with advertising a PG-13 movie to smaller children via toys. So a disclaimer had to come with the Burger King Small Soldiers toys, stating, quote, While toys are suitable for children of all ages, the movie Small Soldiers may contain material that is inappropriate for younger children. And some of Burger King restaurants didn't even offer the Small Soldiers toys, but instead a Mr. Potato Head. Uh, woohoo. In a situation reminiscent of the Batman Returns Happy Meal toys, which were cancelled after McDonald's was shocked with the amount of violence in Batman Returns. I guess the moral of the story is action movies and fast food family restaurants don't mix. Number 8. Less puppets, more CGI. Stan Winston was a great makeup effects artist who created some great practical effects for movies such as the Terminator films and Jurassic Park. And in order to bring the action figures to life for small soldiers, Dante seeked Winston to create puppets in order to breathe life into the Gorgonites and Commando Elites. And to be honest, the puppetry work looks pretty cool. They look like action figures while being sentient and having unique movements and characteristics. However, during the movie's production, it was discovered that it would be easier and cheaper to create the action figures through CGI, which was relatively new back then. So less of Winston's puppets were used in favor of creating the killer toys digitally. Dante would go on to say that the effects were one third puppetry while the rest of the effects were CGI. The effects were created by Industrial Light and Magic, and to be fair, they do actually look pretty good and convincing. Number 7, Uncredited Spielbergs. 
Steven Spielberg was an executive producer on Small Soldiers, which isn't really surprising as the movie was distributed by DreamWorks Pictures and Amberlin, both of which were founded by Spielberg. However, Spielberg's executive producer efforts were uncredited, of which I don't know why. Spielberg also acted as an executive producer on other Dante movies, such as Gremlins and Inner Space, both of which credit him. Maybe he just didn't like Small Soldiers? I don't know. What's even more interesting is that Steven Spielberg's sister, Anne Spielberg, co-wrote the script, and her involvement is also uncredited. Once again, very strange that having the involvement of a Spielberg would go unrecognised, especially considering the word Spielberg should be a sure win for enticing movie audiences. If I'm making a movie, and if I get help from even, say, I don't know, Steven Spielberg's pet cat, I am still going to credit that cat. So to me, it's strange that they cut ties to the Spielberg name. Number six, interesting choice of voice actors. Small Soldiers has a cast of actors that you no doubt have seen in other movies over the years, including a very young pre-Spider-Man Kirsten Dunst, Phil Hartman, Dennis Leary, that bald guy from Alvin and the Chipmunks, the annoying dad from the Transformers movies, and this actress who I swear looks like Helen Mirren's stunt double. And not forgetting, of course, appearances from Joe Dante regulars Dick Miller, because Dick Miller makes any movie that bit more awesome, and Robert Picardo. But the voice actors used is where things get very interesting. Tommy Lee Jones voices Chip Hazard, along with the rest of his Commando Elite being voiced by the cast of The Dirty Dozen, minus Richard Jekyll, who died before he could record his lines, to which he was replaced by Bruce Dern. Archer, the leader of the Gorgonites, was voiced by Frank Langella, who does so with a sense of nobility, with the rest of the Gorgonites being voiced by the cast of This Is Spinal Tap. So yeah, in a nutshell, if you've ever wanted to see an epic battle of the Dirty Dozen versus This Is Spinal Tap, led by Tommy Lee Jones and Frank Langella, then Small Soldiers has you covered. The evil Frankenstein Barbie doll monsters were voiced by famous young actresses of that time, including Christina Ricci and Sarah Michelle Gellar. Okay, is it just me or is the voice cast that bit more interesting and random than the actual live cast? Number five, music. Small Soldiers was scored by movie composing legend Jerry Goldsmith, who composed most of Dante's films. Despite the fact that he scored Small Soldiers much later in his career, and that the music he made for the movie doesn't really get spoken about much, it still features his iconic sound, where he blends suburban lifestyle music with action and excitement, and of course, adventure. Because let's be honest, no one could compose adventure quite like Goldsmith. DreamWorks Records also released a soundtrack tie-in for the movie, featuring, surprisingly, many classic rocking tunes, such as War by Bone Fugs and Harmony, Another One Bites the Dust by Queen, and Love is a Battlefield by Pat Benata, among many others. The soundtrack made it to 103 on the Billboard charts, which isn't too bad considering the album features older songs that would have appealed to older people, as opposed to the younger viewers who would have actually watched Small Soldiers. The movie also featured Communication Breakdown by Led Zeppelin, and the irony of this being that the band is usually very picky with letting their music being put in movies, TV shows, and other medias. So I guess Small Soldiers just resonated with the group? However, the song didn't make it to the soundtrack album. Small Soldiers also featured the song Wannabe by the Spice Girls, which also wasn't present on the soundtrack. You know, just throwing it out there. I guess the moral is, if you want to be my lover, then you better not put my song on the Small Soldiers soundtrack album. Number 4. Merchandise Burger King weren't the only ones to get in on the merchandising of Small Soldiers, as Kenner released an action figure lineup of the action figures seen in the movie. Yep, action figures based on action figures. We are in some Inception mind warp now. And the figures were bulky and robust with great detail, but lacking in articulation with limited movements. However, they did look good. Maybe not ideal for playing with, but definitely something cool to have on display. A PlayStation game based on Small Soldiers also came out. The game is unique in that it introduces new characters not seen in the movie, and Tommy Lee Jones reprises his role as Chip Hazard. The game wasn't exactly a standout game in the lineup of PlayStation games, 
but had good graphics and was enjoyable enough. There was also a Game Boy game, which is a standard side stroller, where you play as Archer, making his way out of a toy shop into the real world. All very standard. Number 3. Inspired by Real Toys It's not hard to conceive the idea that the action figure toys in Small Soldiers were inspired by real toys. In fact, two of the biggest action figure lineups of the 80s, with the Commando Elites being influenced by G.I. Joe, what with their action and militaristic approach. And yes, the G.I. Joes of the 80s were a lot smaller, but go back to the older G.I. Joes of the 60s and they were a larger size, as seen in Small Soldiers. The monstrous Gorgonites were inspired by the Masters of the Universe action figure lineup, which would often consist of crazy, out of this world beings and creatures. What's fascinating about the war between the Commando Elites and Gorgonites is the fact that the heroic looking, humanistic Commando Elites are the villains, whereas the bizarre, monstrous looking Gorgonites were in fact the heroes, leading to that old saying that looks can be deceiving. Also, as mentioned, the Gorgonites were inspired by Masters of the Universe, and Frank Langella also played Skeletor in the Masters of the Universe movie. Yep, yeah, I've just switched into conspiracy mode. Number 2. Movie Poster Rework The original promotional poster for Small Soldiers featured the character Chip Hazard holding up a gun to the viewer in a sideways notion. However, it was felt that this looked too violent, so the poster was reworked to remove the gun, which, when you think about it, actually looks weird. It literally looks like his gun has just been removed, with him now holding an invisible gun. Who knows, maybe Chip did an Indiana Jones and went to grab his gun only to realise it wasn't there. Traces of the old poster can be seen in the movie itself, where we see the Allen character holding up advertisement boards of the Commando Elites, where Chip, like in the original poster, is holding up a gun. Number 1. Casting Possibilities The movie's main protagonist, Allen, was played by Gregory Smith, who would continue to work as an actor and director, even directing episodes of Arrow, The Flash, and Legends of Tomorrow. However, Joseph Mazzello originally auditioned for the role of Alan. Mazzello had previously appeared in the hit movie Jurassic Park as Timmy. However, starring in the biggest movie of the 90s didn't land him the role. Just recently, Mazzello also appeared as John Deacon in the biopic Bohemian Rhapsody, in which the Queen song Another One Bites the Dust is in the Small Soldiers soundtrack. Okay, two conspiracy theories in one video. Sheesh! As mentioned, the cast of Dirty Dozen lends their voice to play the Commando Elites. However, Joe Dante originally wanted the cast of Soldiers and Predator to voice the Elites, with Arnold Schwarzenegger playing Chip Hazard, which would have been frickin' awesome! Coming to think of it, Chip Hazard's design does look quite similar to that of Dutch in Predator. Hmm... So to sum it up, although Small Soldiers isn't a perfect movie, it's an enjoyable one and probably one for Joe Dante fans. When it originally came out, it didn't really resonate with me, but I think at that stage I was a bit older. But I also find that those who grew up watching it seem to have a fondness for it. So I say watch it as a curious piece of 90s kish. Anyway, I'm Minty, and seriously, the cast of Predator would have been awesome. See ya!